Welcome to the Medieval Mixed Gender Fight Club, where chivalry is not dead, but your opponents might be. Who says knights and ladies can't fight side by side? In Medieval Mixed Gender Fight Clubs, people of all genders and classes participated in combat sports, including fighting together. It's like Tinder, but with swords instead of swipes. Join us as we uncover the mysteries of this historic rumor. You can decide whether you believe it or not. Back in the Middle Ages, life was pretty rough. There were no smartphones, no Netflix, and no TikTok dances to keep people entertained. Instead, they had to make their fun, and for some, that meant beating the living daylights out of each other. Combat and martial arts were a big deal in medieval Europe. If you wanted to be a proper knight, you had to know how to wield a sword and ride a horse like a boss. And if you wanted to settle a dispute with someone, you could always challenge them to a duel, as long as you followed the proper rules and etiquette, of course. But what about mixed gender fights? Were those a thing back then? It's hard to say for sure, but Talhofer's illustrations suggest that at least some people were into the idea. Maybe they were trying to prove that men and women were equal on the battlefield, or maybe they just wanted to see some epic smackdowns between the sexes. Either way, it's clear that combat was a major part of medieval life, and that people back then weren't afraid to get a little rough and tumble when they needed to. Now, you might be wondering why such a club would even exist in the first place. Well, medieval Europe was a complex and hierarchical society, with strict rules around gender roles and conduct. However, there were also times when these rules were challenged or subverted, and that's where the medieval mixed-gender fight club comes in. As Hunter Dukes notes, there were occasional instances of women taking up arms and fighting alongside men in medieval battles or tournaments. These women were often highly skilled and trained in combat, and they were not afraid to challenge the status quo. The medieval mixed-gender fight club could be seen as an extension of this defiance, a place where women and men could come together on equal footing and test their mettle in the ring. Of course, we can only speculate about what went on in these fights. Were they purely for sport, or did they have deeper social or political implications? It's hard to say, but the fact that they existed at all is a testament to the complexity and diversity of medieval society. As the old saying goes, rules are made to be broken, and it seems like the fighters of the medieval mixed-gender fight club took that motto to heart. According to Talhofer's illustrations, combatants in these battles were armed with everything from maces to rocks wrapped in cloth, and the fights took place in waist-deep holes, adding an extra layer of challenge and danger to the proceedings. But despite the lack of formal rules, there were still certain codes of conduct that fighters were expected to follow. For example, it was probably frowned upon to kick your opponent in the nether regions or poke them in the eye with a sharp stick. And while there's no evidence to suggest that the first rule of Fight Club, you do not talk about Fight Club, was actually in effect, the fights were probably kept secret, perhaps to avoid attracting unwanted attention from the authorities. All in all, the medieval mixed-gender Fight Club sounds like a pretty wild time. It was a no-holds-barred arena where men and women could duke it out, armed with whatever they had on hand. And while the lack of official rules might have made things more dangerous, it also made the fights more unpredictable and exciting. So picture this. The male fighter is standing waist-deep in a hole, gripping a wooden mace with white knuckles. Meanwhile, his opponent, a fierce and fearless female warrior, stands above him, feet planted firmly on the ground. She's armed with a rock wrapped in cloth, which doesn't sound like much, but trust us, it's a deadly weapon in the right hands. And let's talk about those unisex outfits for a moment. Forget about haute couture. These matching ensembles wouldn't look out of place at the Met Gala. They're stylish and functional and provide maximum mobility for the fighters as they engage in a series of acrobatic and seriously painful-looking moves. Hans Talhofer, the German fencing master who created these illustrations in the 15th century, certainly knew how to put his combatants through their paces. Now, you might be wondering, who would volunteer to participate in a fight like this? Well, let's just say that these warriors were not your average knights and damsels. They were tough, skilled, and ready to take on anyone who dared to challenge them, regardless of gender. Most mixed-gender fight clubs had their own set of rules, but there were some common guidelines that were followed. Fights were held in a controlled environment, with referees or judges overseeing the matches to prevent excessive violence and serious injuries. Blunt weapons were generally used to avoid causing serious harm, but protective clothing such as helmets and gauntlets were still worn to prevent accidents. 
fights were conducted in rounds, with points awarded for successful strikes or takedowns, and the fighter with the most points at the end of the round would win. A code of conduct was also expected to be followed by fighters, including rules against attacking a downed opponent or using excessive force. Violating these rules could lead to disqualification or expulsion from the club. Ah, the joys of historical speculation! As it turns out, Hunter Dukes is not alone in his wonderment about the medieval mixed-gender fight club. Many experts have weighed in on these striking images, and some have even called out the hastily researched articles that try to pass them off as evidence of medieval divorce by combat. Let's be real, that's just some Game of Thrones-level nonsense right there. Formal dueling as a means of settling disputes had fallen out of fashion long before Hans Talhofer was even born. So what exactly is going on in these illustrations? Well, according to Alison Couder, a professor of religious studies at UC Davis, Talhofer may have been drawing on older traditions of symbolic combat, ones that were more about performance than actual violence. I would suggest that no records of judicial duels between husbands and wives exist after 1200 because of both changes in the reality and the ideal of what a woman could be and do. Before 1200, women may well have battled their husbands. Women understood and defended the importance of their economic and administrative roles in the household. After the 12th century, however, law, custom, and religion made marital duels all but unthinkable, she states. Women were active participants in these mixed-gender fight clubs, including famous figures like Joan of Arc and Katerina Sforza. These women were known for their exceptional combat skills and were respected members of their respective clubs. Joan of Arc was a French peasant girl who led the French army to several victories during the Hundred Years' War. She was also a member of a mixed-gender fight club and was known for her sword-fighting abilities. Caterina Sforza was an Italian noblewoman who was known for her bravery and martial skills. She was a member of the Order of the Brawlers and is said to have defeated a male opponent in a sword fight. These women were not the only ones, as women from all walks of life participated in these clubs, breaking gender barriers in combat sports. Think of it like this. In modern times, we have things like dance battles or rap battles, where performers use their skills to compete against each other playfully and creatively. The medieval mixed-gender fight club was a way for skilled warriors to show off their abilities and test themselves against worthy opponents, all in a safe and controlled environment. Now, let's dive a little deeper into the mind of Hans Talhofer. Why would he include such archaic material in his instructional manuals? Was he trying to give beginners a good laugh? Or was he just trying to flex his historical knowledge muscles? While we love the idea that he might have been trying to inject his manuscripts with a bit of an erotic charge, let's face it, scholars like Alison Couder, with their fancy PhDs and impressive research chops, are probably closer to the truth when they suggest that Talhofer was just covering all his historical bases. But hey, who says we can't have a little fun with these images? Let's appreciate them for what they are works of art that have captured the imaginations of people for centuries. And who knows, maybe they'll even inspire some avant-garde circus acts, Halloween couples costumes, or unique Valentine's Day gifts. I mean, what says I love you more than a hard-drawn illustration of two medieval warriors beating the snot out of each other, right? Let's talk about the possible reasons behind the inclusion of women in the medieval mixed-gender fight club. One theory is that women were included in the fight simply because they wanted to be. In an era where women were often relegated to subservient roles and denied agency, the opportunity to engage in physical combat and prove their mettle may have been an empowering one. Another theory is that the inclusion of women was purely for entertainment purposes. After all, there's no denying that watching men and women battle it out in a makeshift arena would have been a thrilling spectacle for onlookers. Plus, the inclusion of women added an extra layer of novelty to the fights, which could have helped draw in bigger crowds. And, of course, there's always the possibility that there were deeper, more symbolic reasons behind the inclusion of women in the medieval mixed-gender fight club. Perhaps it was a reflection of changing societal attitudes towards gender roles and power dynamics. Or maybe it was a way to explore themes of love, passion, and desire in a time when such topics were often taboo. While the club itself may have been short-lived and obscure, its influence can still be felt today. For one, the concept of mixed-gender combat is still a popular one in modern media, from movies like Kill Bill to TV shows like Game of Thrones. Additionally, the medieval mixed-gender fight club serves as a reminder of the rich and varied history of combat sports. From ancient gladiatorial contests to modern-day MMA, humans have always been drawn to the thrill and drama of combat. And the medieval mixed-gender fight club was no exception. 
In the end, the club may have been shrouded in mystery and speculation, but its impact on the world of combat sports and entertainment cannot be denied. The medieval mixed-gender fight club may have been a strange and obscure chapter in history. It's a testament to the enduring human fascination with combat and competition. And who knows, maybe someday we'll uncover even more secrets and surprises from this fascinating era.